This is more about living in the time of the coronavirus pandemic. Voting is the big news of the day. In Georgia, they are voting in a runoff election for two U.S. Senators. The Republicans are incumbents. The Democrats are favored. It's supposed to be close. And the trumpet is already saying that it's rigged. Tomorrow is the official vote of the Electoral College, which should seal it for the PM. But a crew of stubborn Republicans is going to challenge the outcome, claiming irregularities. And no matter what happens, the trumpet will not concede. Everyone wants to know, what's his end game? I say, only the shadow knows. Samuel Pepys here. It occurred to me that I could be Daniel Defoe. He wrote a journal of the plague year. But I think I'll stick with Sam. And maybe I'll read Camus' The Plague. As far as vaccine shortages are concerned, there is a ladder of blame that extends upwards like the giant's beanstalk. It looks as if the dummy craps will win both of the Senate races in Georgia. That means they will control the House, the Senate, and the executive branch. One theory has it that they intend to admit Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico as states. They would be completely dummy crap controlled, extending their power. That's speculation. What is true is that if they did win both elections, and they did, they can do as they please. The trumpet has lost in every conceivable way, but he refuses to concede. You can't give up on something that was stolen, he told a crowd on the ball in D.C., and he called on the vice trumpet, who, as VP, is presiding over the Electoral College vote count, to reject it. We are depending on him to come through, the trumpet told the cheering crowd. The vice trumpet cannot do that. He doesn't believe he has the legal right to do that, so the two of them will part ways, meaning that the trumpet has fired or dismissed everyone in the entire political world. He's completely isolated. Whether he concedes or not, he is about to become the shadow. But right now, the dummy craps are ta tap dancing on his grave. That little celebration was interrupted. After the trumpet made his speech, saying that he was disappointed in the vice trumpet, who lacked the courage to do what he should have done, the crowd of perhaps 100,000 people swept over to the Capitol building, overwhelmed security, and broke into it. The meeting there, presided over by the vice trumpet, had to be suspended. Washington police tried to regain control of the Capitol building. One woman was shot. Every single political commentator I heard said the same thing. I have never seen anything like this before. They are calling it a complete security failure. The trumpet tweeted praising the D.C. police and calling for a peaceful protest. Every politician deplored it. All of the media deplored it. A reporter questioning, questioned a protester about the violence and the breaching of the Capitol building. The protester said, first of all, I'm a veteran, and I am a member of Bikers for Trump. Second, there is no violence. We are all peaceful. And you say the Capitol building has been breached. 
That isn't true. That building is supposed to be for the people. We are the people. The reporter stopped the interview. The PM is going to say, this is terrible. We have a right to protest, but we need law and order. He will say that the trumpet called for this. It's all his fault. Politicians are saying that they are hearing from ambassadors all over the world, saying, you would oppose this if it were happening in our country. Look at you. This lawlessness is happening to you. What has happened to America? I know this. For Trump supporters, this is the Alamo.